Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Indian Prime Minister Modi reviews rescue operations at Morbi Bridge collapse site meets survivors. Deny Imran face saving, reject his demands, Nawaz Sharif tells Pakistan PM Shehbaz. An ICC prosecutor allowed to resume probe of Afghanistan atrocities. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday visited the site where a bridge collapsed on Sunday, killing more than 130 people. The Prime Minister inspected rescue operations and also met survivors at the civil hospital in Morbi in his home state of Gujarat. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday visited the site of the Morbi bridge collapse tragedy and reviewed the ongoing search and rescue operations. The colonial era suspension bridge over the Macho River in Morbi was packed with sightseers, many in town to celebrate the Diwali and Chhat Puja festivals, when it broke on Sunday evening, sending people plunging about 10 meters into the water. The search operations entered a third day on Tuesday, although authorities said nearly all those believed to have been missing were now accounted for. Authorities said they believe that around 200 people were on the bridge when it collapsed. The dead toll rose to at least 135 on Tuesday. The Prime Minister, who had been touring the state which has elections due by early next year, later also met the survivors at the civil hospital in Morbi. The Gujarat government has declared that Wednesday would be a day of mourning. The state authorities said in a statement 152 people had been discharged from the hospital while 17 were still undergoing treatment. The police has arrested nine people on charges of culpable homicide, not amounting to murder. Those arrested include ticketing clerks, accused of letting too many people onto the bridge, and the contractors that had been in charge of repair work. Amid an increase in farm fires, pollution in India's national capital, New Delhi, has surged to more than 20% since the weekend, higher than their levels a year ago, according to the government data. Smoke from farm fires contributed to up to 26% of the tiny PM2.5 lung-damaging pollutants in the city's air. The share of farm fires affecting pollution levels in India's national capital New Delhi has surged to more than 20% since the weekend, higher than the levels a year ago, government data showed on Tuesday as the capital's air quality turned severe at many places. Smoke from farm fires contributed to up to 26% of the tiny PM2.5 lung-damaging pollutants in the city's air, the highest in the past two years, during the period of mid-October to early November according to data from the Ministry of Earth Science. Delhi's air quality index crossed the severe level of 400 at most of its monitoring stations on Tuesday as visibility dropped. Now we have to see anything. We have to put lights around three times extra. We have to put a truck on, we have to put a visibility on. We have to see anything in 100 meters. We have to put so much light on. We have to see so much visibility on. First of all, we have to see a lot of visibility on. Authorities in Delhi on Sunday suspended most construction and demolition activities, predicting a worsening of its air quality from Tuesday because of calmer winds and other meteorological conditions. Now, in Delhi, it's the case that you don't ask about the crowd plus pollution. It's on both high peaks. So, obviously, you think that बच्चों को सेफ रखना चाहते हैं, खुद को सेफ रखना चाहते हैं, और आपकी लॉन्ग लाइफ रहे, तो पोल्यूशन को ऑब्वियसली कम करना ही पड़ेगा। गवर्नमेंट क्या कर रही है इस बारे में ये तो नहीं है, लेकिन वो कर रही है अपना काम, पर पोल्यूशन आज की डेट में इतना हो चुका है कि आपको पता ही है कि हम 
कोविड चाहे खत्म हो गया हो लेकिन हम मास्क लगा के रखते हैं द डेली गवर्नमेंट सीज इट हैज फॉर्मड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड एटी सिक्स टीम्स टू मॉनिटर कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क फॉर वायोलेशन दो हॉस्पिटल रेलवेज एयरपोर्ट्स एंड अदर पब्लिक सेक्टर्स कैन कंटिन्यू विद कंस्ट्रक्शन एक्टिविटीज विद डस्ट कंट्रोल मेजर्स इट इज ऑल्सो डिप्लॉइंग नियरली टू हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी थ्री एंटी स्मॉक गन्स एंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी वन मशीन्स टू स्प्रिंकल वाटर अक्रॉस द सिटी टू सेटल डस्ट In news from Pakistan, ruling PMLN Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif has prohibited his younger brother, Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, from accepting the demands of opposition PTI chief Imran Khan. Nawaz has instructed Shehbaz not to bow before Khan's demands to hold snap elections. The ruling PMLN Party Supremo Nawaz Sharif has suggested Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif. to refrain engaging in talks with opposition PTI party chairman Imran Khan in connection with his long march rally to call for snap polls taking to twitter nawaz on monday said that he has instructed shahbaz not to bow before khan's demand at any cost whether he instigates some of of 2000 people or 20000 people not to give him any chance to say face Meanwhile the United States on Monday reiterated that there is no truth to the regime change allegations leveled by Imran Khan vowing not to let disinformation get in the way of significant relationship between the two countries This comes as Khan has continuously alleged that the trust vote which ousted him as the prime minister in April was foreign conspiracy against him by the United States He also claimed to have a diplomatic cable to prove it despite public denials by Washington Khan is expected to lead his long march rally to Islamabad on November 4. Since being removed from office, Khan has held protest gatherings across the country calling for snap elections, but the government has said they will be held as scheduled in October or November next year. Well, moving on, a massive demonstration was staged by a political activist in Pakistan-administered Kashmir recently against the Pakistani invasion of the territory 75 years ago, which brought in its big, horrifying stories of mass plunder and killings. They blamed even after seven decades, people in the region continue to suffer discrimination and are denied basic fundamental rights. Activists of the Muzaffarabad National Equality Party staged a massive demonstration recently in Pakistan administered Kashmir to condemn the Pakistani invasion of the territory 75 years ago which brought in its wake horrifying stories of mass plunder and killings On the fateful day of October 22 1947 nearly 10000 tribesmen backed by Pakistani army invaded Kashmir to occupy it by force The invasion resulted in nearly a third of the territory now known as Pakistan administered Kashmir falling to the raiders. Consequently, Indian troops were airlifted to Kashmir on October 26 and they succeeded in blocking the raiders advance. People in the illegally occupied region have over the years blamed that they are denied basic fundamental rights and are met it out with severe brutality for voicing their concerns. The protesters raised concern that their natural resources are plundered by Pakistan while the stooge government in the region only helps Islamabad fill its treasuries with no welfare policies and development for them Locals have long accused that they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. The International Criminal Court has ruled that its prosecutor Karim Khan can resume his investigations into atrocities in Afghanistan, a probe that had been put on hold for more than 2 years. The authorization relates to all alleged crimes and actors including the Taliban and the Afghan government and international forces. Judges at the International Criminal Court ICC on Monday ruled that prosecutor Karim Khan can resume his investigations into atrocities in Afghanistan, a probe that had been put on hold for more than 2 years. According to the ruling, the judges said the investigation could move forward as Kabul is not presently carrying out genuine investigations into the alleged crimes under the ICC's jurisdiction as it had earlier insisted. The judges however stressed 
that the present authorization relates to all alleged crimes and actors that were subject to the prosecution's 2017 request to open a probe. That request names the Taliban, Afghan government forces and the United States forces as possible groups involved in alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity but does not mention ISIS-K. It is unlikely that the Taliban will cooperate with any ICC investigation. The judges said they had repeatedly requested additional information from Kabul, but all requests went unanswered. The withdrawal of US-led forces from Afghanistan completed a minute before midnight on August 30, 2021, came as the Taliban swept to power after a 20-year insurgency with a speed and ease that took the world by surprise. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani fled the country and his government collapsed. In July, the UN mission in Afghanistan said that the Taliban were responsible for extrajudicial killings, torture, arbitrary arrests and inhumane punishments in the months since they toppled the previous government and seized power. And the CPN Mao Center in its election manifesto unveiled on Monday has expressed commitment to amend the constitution to introduce directly elected presidential system and fully proportional election system. CPN Mao Center is one of the five parties of the ruling coalition that has been in government since July last year. CPN Merge Centre Chair Push Kamal Dehel on Monday unveiled the party's election manifesto which expresses commitment to amend the constitution to introduce directly elected presidential system and fully proportional election system. The 82-page manifesto says the CPN Merge Centre would work to achieve double-digit economic growth and make policies to provide employment to the youths. The party supports a presidential system where a candidate securing 51% vote in direct election becomes the president and a candidate securing 51% votes in the province becomes chief minister. The number of provincial members in all provinces won't be more than 330. The party said that it would also revise and replace Nepal's unequal treaties with India, including the 1950 treaty and tripartite Gorkha Soldiers Recruitment Treaty, local media reported. CPN Merge Center is part of the country's five-party ruling coalition that has been in government since July last year. It will compete against a loose alliance of the main communist opposition and royalists in the November 20 vote for the 275-member parliament. For both sides, addressing the high cost of living would be a priority during the ongoing festival season in the Himalayan country of 30 million people. And a huge flock of Siberian migratory birds have arrived in Prayagraj in India's Uttar Pradesh state to escape extreme cold of their Arctic home grounds. Bird watchers and tourists have been gathering on the river banks to catch a glimpse of the beautiful species of the migratory birds. A huge flock of Siberian migratory birds have arrived at the Triveni Sangam of Prayagraj in India's Uttar Pradesh state fleeing the freezing conditions of the Arctic home grounds. The Triveni Sangam is the confluence of three rivers, Ganga, Yamuna and the mystical Saraswati River. The place has attained international importance as a breeding ground and an alternate habitat for a large variety of migratory as well as domestic birds. Bird watchers and tourists were seen gathering on the river banks in Prakraj for a visual delight of the winged visitors. काफी अच्छा लगता है यहां पे देख के ये पक्षियों को बाहर से आ रहे हैं हमारे यहां पे और काफी हम लोग ने भी इन लोग को मतलब चारा खिलाया है और काफी अच्छा लगता है साइबेरिया साइबेरिया से आए हैं ये लोग पक्षी और लोग यहां पे इसीलिए इनको देखने के लिए आते हैं काफी दूर-दूर से It has also brought cheer for the boatmen who earn handsome amounts fearing batches of tourists closer to the birds multiple times in a day पक्षी यहाँ आए हुए हैं हमारा भी रोजगार बढ़ा हुआ है जो दाना बेचते हैं उनका भी रोजगार बढ़ा हुआ है आती आता है यहाँ घूमने टहलने के लिए उन्हीं के जरिए से हमें भी दो पैसा कमाने का मिलता है। With the onset of winter in the northern hemisphere, these birds spread their wings to begin a journey spanning thousands of miles to fly to the kinder atmosphere of Indian subcontinent and usually return to their homes in spring season. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.